Hey there, Shirtlad here, and this time we'll be taking a look at the roster of Rango vs F2 Plus for the PS2. This will be a set of short summaries and notes for each unit, in order to give you the general idea of what is each unit capable of, as well as other brief yet nifty bits of information. There's quite a lot of them, so I'll be putting the timestamps in the description if you're looking for a specific one. Without further ado, let's begin. I'll be going from the most expensive cost category to the cheapest. Starting with the 700 point ones, here's where you can find the boss units, such as the Destroy Gundam and the Meteor versions of Kira and Efren's machines. These aren't playable outside of the Versus mode. The Destroy Gundam is a weird blend between the Psycho Gundam and the Big Zam in terms of both firepower and resilience. Though it also has missiles, the beam hands from Zeong and the powerful charge attack. At the same time, it's a bit of a sitting duck, due to its slow walk speed and rather cumbersome boosting. It may be powerful, but it lacks in versatility and it gets hit way too easily. Meteor variants of Justice, Freedom, Infinite Justice and Strike Freedom are more or less the same unit when it comes to its moveset. The single difference between them are the charge attacks but all of those are just a wall of beam attacks in a single direction. These can also hold their own in terms of melee, though the turning speed is very slow, which does partially hinder its usefulness. In the 590 point tier, you can find the most powerful machines of Seed Destiny, such as Strike Freedom, Legend Gundam, Destiny Gundam and Infinite Justice. The Destiny Gundam is more than well equipped for mid to close ranged combat. Stunts? Tools for closing in, knockdowns, you name it. The obvious cherry on the top is the melee attacks, not to mention the not so subtle G Gundam move. As for the Legend Gundam, you're essentially getting the Providence Gundam with a few more tricks up its sleeve. It's pretty versatile thanks to its detachable dragoons, which can be remotely controlled and thanks to the charge attack, beam spikes and the beam rifle, you still have options in case you run dry with the dragoons. Strike Freedom is Freedom Gundam's stronger cousin, offering more firepower, multi-target lock-ons and you can throw the blue bits at your foes as well. This one is also very easy to pick up and start using, making it a pretty good starting unit. The last 590 mobile suit is the Infinite Justice Gundam, which is, as you might have guessed, an upgrade for the Justice Gundam. Functionally speaking, it is very similar to its predecessor though the launchable backpack is much more devastating and you also get a slightly better armor and a grappling hook. It's a bit harder to use, but once you master it, it becomes very rewarding. The 560 point tier contains Zeft's Freedom, Justice and Provenance Gundams, Earth Alliance's Zamzaza and Gelsge, as well as Orb's Akatsuki with both of its backpacks. Starting with the Akatsuki Gundam duo, you're mostly getting the same golden machine with two different loadouts. The former of the two is the Owashi Skypack, which is a sturdy, offense-focused machine. The latter is the Shiranui Space Pack, which carries the Dragoon remote control bits, which can create a shield for your ally, or bombard your foes from various angles. Both of these can also reflect beams using the special melee input. The Freedom Gundam is the flashiest of the bunch, it's quite formidable in the air and it packs a punch over large ranges. Its most lethal tool is the high met full burst attack, where it fires all of its guns at once in a linear pattern. As for the Justice Gundam, you're getting a dark pink machine that carries a special backpack, a beam rifle and some boomerangs. Playstyle wise, you'll be relying on the backpack a lot when it comes to mobility and offense. So I'd say that while it's not a hard unit to learn per se, it definitely requires a degree of practice. Right besides the Justice Gundam is the Providence Gundam. It's a pretty decent machine, it has the remote control dragoons and it does a very good job when it comes to sheer quantity of firepower. Just like its Legend Gundam counterpart, the dragoons are the core of its playstyle. Though if you overdo it, your ranged options will be severely limited for a while. The last two units among the 560s are the Zanzaza and the Gelski, 
both of which can be unlocked by beating the arcade mode a set amount of times. Zamzaza is a giant green crab with cannons and a shield. It's very fun to use and the shield becomes a godsend, considering the size of the machine. The Gale's Gate looks much more like a mix of a dagger L and a spider, which is useful at longer ranges, while also having pretty good options up close. For 50 point tier, is filled with high-end grunts and mobile suits that were piloted by specific characters such as the Strike Rouge and the Chaos Gundam. The first three spots of the 450 group are taken by the variations of the Impulse Gundam, namely the Force Impulse, the Sword Impulse and the Blast Impulse. It's very similar to the Strike Gundam in this regard, though the moveset is a bit more versatile. Starting with the Force Impulse, it mirrors the AL Strike in terms of mobility and its general role. Since the role in question is that of a nimble all-rounder unit, the Force Impulse is great for learning the fundamentals of the game. Blast Impulse, on the other hand, is a ranged powerhouse, featuring missiles, moving robies and beam cannons. That said, it also holds its own at close to mid-range thanks to a throwable beam javelin. This one requires quite a lot of practice to use effectively, but once you get the hang of it, the Blast Impulse is quite the force to be reckoned with. If you like the Sword Strike's melee prowess, but want an extra ranged option, the Sword Impulse is your go-to option. Overall, a very good unit for close quarters combat. The extra boomerang and the free shot beam rifle are quite nifty as well. Xavier Gundam is a very nimble unit that also sports decent firepower. It can transform in order to close the distance and the backpack mounted beam cannons pack quite the punch. However, the under average HP leaves a very small margin for errors, which makes it less viable for newer players. Being true to its name, the Chaos Gundam is an interesting unit that relies on its many ranged weapons in order to unleash mayhem. The core of its playstyles are the two cylindrical weapon pods on its back, which are essentially just more versatile versions of the Dragoon system of Legend and Providence Gundam. Its melee moves are pretty good too, allowing you to intercept a charging enemy with a well-timed poke. In short, it's a moving Swiss knife. Kaya Gundam is the top dog amongst the quadruped units, pun fully intended. The regular Gaia Gundam is a well-balanced machine that can hold its own at most ranges and uses the devastating melee swipes in its dog mode. If you want to fully focus on this mode, pick the orange version. It lets you stay in the dog mode for longer and can unleash a barrage of shots with its special ranged input. To get this one, you'll have to beat the arcade mode 9 times. If you don't mind your design, Abyss Gundam comes in pretty handy if you want to land a lot of hits on players who don't know how to block it. In all seriousness, the Abyss Gundam excels in offense and pressure thanks to the large variety of projectiles in its disposal. The rockets are useful when approaching, the fork beam is a great pressure tool and the cannons can be used for both general ranged combat and firing as you retreat. It has its gimmicks but is a pretty good unit nonetheless. The Strike Rouge is the rose-colored sibling of the L Strike and aside from certain moves it is functionally identical in most regards. One thing I should add is the fact that the special melee doesn't move you forward during the startup, which makes it harder to land in some cases. Speeding along the ground, the Dome Trooper comes equipped with a multi purpose launcher and the beam reflecting force field. Overall, a very powerful support unit. I'd say the only major flaw of it are the rather cumbersome recovery animations for most attacks. Continuing on to the customized versions of the Goof Ignited, Gunner Zaku Warrior and Zaku Phantom, there are seven of them in fact, although three of which are unlocked by playing through the arcade mode three, five and six times respectively. Starting with Isaac Jules Goof Ignited, you're basically getting a white Goof with a bit more HP, slightly different combos and a whip spinning move that blocks enemy attacks and deals damage up close. Other than that, it's incredibly similar to the GIF Ignited. It's very similar in the case of Heine Custom Orange GIF. Minor increase in HP and firepower, alongside the paint job and melee combo changes. I like this one a bit more, since the arm-mounted whip is much more powerful 
there is regular variant. The custom Zaku Phantoms are quite similar in this aspect. Isaac's Blue Slash Phantom sports two large Gatlings on its backpack and the long pole arm, making it very useful for mid to close ranged combat. Dirk Elsman's Black Phantom upgrades the rifle and the Tomahawk from the Zaku Phantom's arsenal by giving it burst fire and manually reloads the former and an extra Tomahawk for the latter. I'd say, I'd say it's a great option if you find yourself using the two weapons more frequently than the backpack missiles. Should you enjoy fighting up close and personal when using the Zaku Phantom, the orange one that belongs to Heine Western Floss should be right up your alley. It has a throwable axe that stuns on hit and a parry move that will make your opponents think twice before they engage in melee combat. The Zaku Phantom number 4 is the regular model in Reza Burel's colors, which is well equipped for ranged combat. One of its defining traits is the missile launcher on its back, which can be used via both the charge shot and the sub weapon inputs. Lunumaria's Gunner Zaku is a great upgrade to its Gunner Zaku counterpart. The beam cannon has more shots, the grow bee is movable, and you get even more grenades. It's also red. But to my dismay, it doesn't make it faster. If you seek a projectile only playstyle, you should definitely try the Calamity Gundam. It may lack in the melee capabilities, but at the same time, you get concentrated and scattering robies, a rocket launcher, and two automatic cannons. These are pretty good, but I would recommend a level of moderation when using the robies since it recharges slowly. Going into a more defensive direction, the Forbidden Gundam carries two shields that protect it from multiple sides when blocking. Another one of its gimmicks is the bending beam shot, which can be manually curved via the direction input. As for the rest of its moveset, it's a mixed bag. The melee attacks reach far and the combos are swift, but the main weapon deals mediocre damage, should you land only one of the two beams that fly out every shot. The Raider Gundam is a speed unit that can do pretty cool things like turning into a bird, carrying around the Gundam hammer, and peppering the air with machine gun fire. Oh, and did I tell you that you can block projectiles and intercept melee attacks with the Gundam hammer? Well now you know. Raider is fun, but tricky to use when you're a new player. Dual Assault Shroud is the heavily armed cousin of the Dual Gundam. With more explosives in its arsenal than its regular counterpart, and the rail gun on its back, the Dual Gundam Assault Shroud is a pretty good machine when it comes to offense. Mobility-wise, not so much. In fact, that is the Assault Shroud's core disadvantage. Continuing the pattern of heavily armed units, the Buster Gundam is a great support unit that is well equipped for most ranges. You get missiles and a beam rifle for mid to long range, and the shotgun takes care of engagements up close. What adds more versatility are the two types of charge attack that turn the rifle shots into garobis and the shotgun blasts get more pellets, spread and damage. The moveset takes some practice to use effectively, but the surface level stuff is largely foolproof. If you want to play sneaky, the Blitz Gundam provides with more than enough. To be precise, its most defining feature is the ability to go invisible. For obvious reasons, there are some balancing drawbacks, like reduced armor while invisible and the duration limit for the set invincibility. In terms of weapons, it's equipped with a beam rifle, stun darts and a grappling hook. I'd say it's a hard unit to use since the margin for error is rather punishing and some of its weapons have a slower startup animation. Aegis Gundam is a pretty interesting one as it fully incorporates transformation within some of its attacks. Using the unit's squid mode, you can deal pretty solid ranged and melee damage as well as grab them for a free combo. The trickier part is knowing when to use what, since certain moves can turn you into a sitting duck if you miss those. Next up are the Free Strike Gundam Backpack variants, the Launcher Strike, the Sword Strike and the L Strike. Launcher Strike is a ranged unit that carries a huge beam cannon alongside various other armaments and playstyle wise it sticks to mid to long ranged combat. However, one of these weapons, specifically the shoulder gatling, is very unbalanced, 
allowing for some truly shameless strategies. The Sword Strike excels up close, using its sword to shred anything within its effective range. It also carries a boomerang that stuns and a grappling hook, both of which being a useful addition to the sword. The third one, Ale Strike, takes the versatility of the Strike Gundam and makes it a bit faster in the air. It also has pretty useful melee attacks too, so all things considered, you should give it a shot if you're looking for a nimble 450 that's easy to pick up and use. Last two units in the 450 point tier are from the Seed Stargazer anime, specifically the Strike Noir and the Stargazer Gundam. The former is a quite overpowered unit that has multiple questionably balanced moves. To name a few, it has a spammable cartwheel barrage with homing projectiles and the charge attack that can interrupt almost everything. That's also the reason why most tournaments don't let you pick this one. As for the Stargazer, it's an interesting unit that relies on setting up traps and activating them at the right time. You also get a nice little poke attack and a free shot beam rifle to aid you with such endeavors. Personally, I like it, but it makes you reliant on your ally to a large extent. The 420 point tier contains some character specific units such as Neo's Windham and Waldfeld's Murasame, less powerful Gundam units such as the Duel and Strike Gundam as well as certain Zaft machines. Starting with Neo's Purple Windham, you're basically just getting a beefed up Jet Windham with shield missiles and a pretty cool special melee attack. It's pretty fast too, so if you like missiles and if you're enjoying playing in the air, I recommend this one. Another great one is Waldfeld's Custom Murasame, which is an upgrade to an already impressive unit. It's a jack of all trades and a pretty good transformable machine, making it a very solid pick. Goof Ignited is a very fun unit to use, thanks to its semi melee loadout. While it is often overshadowed by its 450 point counterparts, it remains pretty strong up close and the beam machine gun isn't as bad as it seems. The goof is also equipped with a sword and a whip, the latter of which is quite versatile. This allows you to easily intercept a moving enemy, hold it in place while dealing damage or reel it in like a fish. If you prefer ranged units, the Gunnerzaku Warrior is a slight upgrade when compared to the Heavy Cannon Jin and the useful support unit. However, it's harder to use than Lunamaria's Gunner Zaku. Zaku Warrior, on the other hand, is a well-balanced all-rounder unit that doesn't really have a particular specialization. It's pretty simple in terms of moveset and can get the job done. Lagaway is a better version of the Railgun Baku unit. Alongside better stats, you also get 8 round bursts for your Railgun and a nice orange paint scheme. The Saiku is what you get when you need more Daka and the only weapon in stock were machine guns. Both of Saigu's ranged weapons are quite formidable, making it a useful support unit. Gwaze Commander type is a great colored upgrade to the ZGMF 600 Gwaze and one of my personal favorites alongside its 270 point counterpart. When compared to the regular Gwaze, you get a better armor, an extra shot for the beam rifle and the claw uppercut is replaced by a kick combo. What remains unchanged are the hip mounted anchors that can stop your foes in place which is quite powerful when combined with the rest of its moveset. The Duel Gundam is a very beginner friendly unit in the 420 point cost category. Duel's main two ranged attacks, the beam rifle and the grenade launcher are pretty good. Melee wise it's pretty formidable as well. One more thing I would add in relation to Duel Gundam is that the special melee is very situational. The last two units in the 420 point group are the two loadout variants of the Strike Gundam. The Strike Gundam with Bazooka is essentially identical to the beam rifle wielding Strike Gundam aside from the Bazooka replacing the main weapon. It shoots and recovers slower than its counterpart, but it hits harder, so it all comes down to personal preference. Strike with the beam rifle is an alternative to the 420 cost dual Gundam, that can do melee fakeouts, and you also get a pair of head mounted machine guns that come in handy at times. The 280 point group contains mass produced units that were too strong to cost 270 points, but not strong enough to cost 420 points. Windham comes in two flavors, Jet Windham and the Nuke Windham. The Jet Windham is a somewhat versatile unit that excels at flying around. 
a budget L strike if you will, although it also carries missiles on its Jet Striker backpack. What may put some people off is the terrible move step and walk speeds, which in turn makes dodging harder in some cases. Nuke Windom is a unit that relies on pressure. Since it is equipped with nuclear missiles, it is potentially an active threat to most units in the game. At the same time, the startup on that attack is rather slow, meaning that the Windom has to rely on its shield missiles and the head-mounted machine guns for the general combat. The whole thing with setting up to hit anything with nukes is pretty elaborate, so not beginner friendly, all things considered. The Mirasomi is a great unit for newer players as it features multiple moves and mechanics that are present in most units while being easier to pick up and learn. Being one of the few 280s that transform, the Mirasomi sports a single mode specific attack that lets you rapidly discharge your usual projectiles towards your target, as well as catching people off guard. The rest of the moveset is also fairly simple and easy to master. Gwaze R is the younger sibling of the original Gwaze, though this model is oriented more towards ranged combat. The anchors on the hips have been replaced by railguns, but overall the moveset of Gwaze R is rather bare bones. The Zeno is the game's token noodle arm amphibious machine. This one has a very fun melee moveset with decent reach and a pretty good damage. The cannon and missiles are pretty solid too, but the larger hitbox might give you a hard time during the round. Din Commander type is an upgrade to the regular Din, with more ammo and longer boost dash duration, which comes in handy when dashing around the stage. When compared to the regular Din, your melee moves are also different. The Baku is a blue dog-like unit that comes in two loadout variations, railguns and missiles. Both of these are quite fast on the ground, which is further helped by their boost dash, enabling the cruising mode for extra speed. Railgun Baku excels at mid to close range, since it can manually rapid fire, and if all of the shots hit, the damage is nothing to scoff at. Missile Pod Baku, on the other hand, has much better tools for long ranges. The missile pod can fire off either two or eight shot bursts, depending on the input. Gen High Maneuver Type 2 is a pretty good melee unit. While it does have ranged options in form of the beam rifle, it's a rather unwieldy one as it shoots, switches and reloads quite slowly. The melee moveset, however, leans very much to the contrary. The Jin High Maneuver Type 2 is a beast when it comes to close ranged combat and you also get a guard stance that intercepts and counters melee attacks. The last 280 cost unit is the Jin with the D-type equipment. It's packing a large and medium sized missiles. It's not very strong melee wise, though the animations are quite funny, considering that the special melee involves literally smacking the target with the missile launchers. At the 270 point cost, which is the second cheapest in the game, you can find low end grunts. These go pretty well with high cost units. First four units in the group are various models from the Dagger line, namely the Dagger Else, the Dark Dagger and the Strike Dagger. Dagger L comes in two flavors, the Jet Dagger, which is a less resilient relative of the Jet Windom, and the Cannon Dagger, which is a pretty good ranged unit with a solid start option. The Dark Dagger, on the other hand, carries a rocket launcher and features some of the weaponry used by other Dagger models. It's most suitable for mid-ranged combat and the color scheme is pretty neat as well. Strike Dagger is the most bare bones of the bunch and a pretty good unit for beginners. With its above average HP for its cost and a decent reload speed, the unit is mostly foolproof. Personally, I use it whenever I go practice moves like blocking in this game. M1 Astray is another all-rounder unit, which is relatively nimble, all things considered. You can use it as an alternative to a strike dagger, though this one is a bit better at close range combat. Speaking of units that excel up close, the Quaze is a formidable low-cost unit that uses its hip-mounted anchors to stop other units in place and capitalize on the opening shortly afterwards. At first it's a bit tricky to use, but over time it became one of my favorite units in this game. What might be a put-off to some is the low ammo count for the rifle, which isn't ideal during ranged battles. Ash is a shrimp-like unit that is pretty mobile on the ground while packing impressive firepower for its cost. It comes in two variations. 
The Black Ash has less HP and can parry melee attacks. You can get it after clearing the arcade mode 8 times. The green one replaces the parry move with a leaping strike and is available by default. Both of these have very good boost step too. The Bavi is a fun transformable unit with a versatile arsenal which ranges from shotguns to grobies. Surprisingly enough, it is more suited for mid to close ranged combat since at that range you can reliably hit both the shotgun blasts and chest beam shots. If you enjoy fighting in the air, I strongly recommend the Din, as it can stay in mid-air for quite some time, while raining hell from above using its various armaments. Next three slots are taken entirely by the various loadouts for the Jin, named after the primary weapons of each loadout, machine gun, bazooka and the heavy ion cannon. Certainly an upgrade over the proto Jin, and you can even pick a specific weapon, but they're a bit too bland for my taste. Last unit among the 270s is the long range recon gin, which is a very good support unit. It may have under average mobility, but its rifle is nothing to scoff at. Overall a solid pick if you don't mind the drawbacks. The 200 point group contains the cheapest units in the game. These are often bottom tiers that are generally harder to use. Gin Ochre is a somewhat distant relative of the machine gun wielding gin with slightly less HP and damage output. However, what it lacks in power, it makes up for it in sheer style. You can disagree if you want to, but I'm pretty sure stunning an enemy mech with just a smoke discharger and then beating it with nothing but bare heads is pretty badass. The blue colored Jin Wasp is relatively simple to use, but its only projectiles are torpedoes, which are quite easy to intercept. Due to this, it does struggle against players, so I'd personally go with the Jin Ochre instead. It has one gimmick going for it, which involves better performance underwater on some maps. Prototype Jin is the very first unit you get to play in the story mode. It carries a machine gun that can be manually reloaded and the sword for melee combat. It's quite bare bones and has under average movement speed too, so using it is going to be an uphill battle for the most part. The Goon is a small, egg-like unit, which comes equipped with missiles and beam guns. It has a solid boost dash for its cost and the headbutt move can catch some people off guard when timed well. Zoot and Gazoot are two slow, transformable units that can switch between the normal mode and the tank mode. Due to their abysmal maneuverability and low HP, you mostly rely on your weaponry to do the heavy lifting. The two differ mostly in loadouts and colors. Life Concert Zaku Warrior is the cheapest unit with a shield. In terms of weapons, you are getting the better version of Gunner Zaku's grenades and that's more or less it. You can also press the special melee input to change the background music to an obnoxious pop song. So technically speaking, the unit can engage in psychological warfare as well. There are four units exclusive to the Versus mode. The Sky Graspers and the Mobius Zero. They're a bit gimmicky and it's not really a good idea to use them in serious battles, but it's fun to goof around with them. And that's it for the roster overview for the game Rango vs F2. It took me a little longer since I had to redo some segments and I hope it has been of some use to you. As for me, I'll go get some rest and then I'm right back to work. Shirtlad, signing out.